The World, Health, World Economic Forum, in collaboration with the World Health Organization, COVID-19 Africa media, uh, media briefing took place today in Gavas, Switzerland, to discuss issues to do with increase in gender-based violence, the effects of the pandemic, and response to it. Our business correspondent, Irene Ubani, participated in the briefing and now joins me for more details. Good afternoon, Irene. Good afternoon, Amaka. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. You just participated in a high-profile uh, briefing uh, hosted by the World Economic Forum in collaboration with World Health Organization and saw leaders uh, from different places, World Health Organization, UNAIDS and the likes. What's the focus of that uh, media briefing, Irene? All right, so basically we're uh, considering the impact of the COVID-19 on women and then um, gender-based violence. As you may know, as a result of the fact that the pandemic broke out, a lot of people have been asked to stay at home. And prior to now, we already had situations regarding gender-based violence. Now we're faced with a situation where these very vulnerable women now have to stay in the same house with whoever it is has been, you know, perpetrate these perpetrators within you know, their space. So the conversation was around, how can we mitigate this situation? What can the government do? What can agencies like the World Health Organization, the United Nations, the African Union, what can they do to ensure that these things are mitigated? Because as a result of the um, pandemic, as a result of a pandemic, you would see that quite a number of girls may come out of this pandemic pregnant which means that they would not be able to go back to school anymore. So these, are the, these were the major focus um, areas during the press briefing. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important what you mentioned there about uh, many young girls who might end up uh, pregnant. Uh, listening to the conversation you had there, I believe it was Winnie who mentioned that 50% of girls who are vulnerable to uh, early pregnancies are saved because they are in school. So they are away from their abusers and all of that. Now you also asked a very important uh, question uh, during the, 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 for the briefing, which I will now read. You say, how can we get the government to incorporate measures to address gender-based violence and child protection in COVID-19 response and recovery plans? What stood out for you in the response to that question, Irene? Now, women leadership matters, right? For them, um, for Winnie who responded to my question, she did talk about the fact that women leadership really mattered and this is something that we should take into consideration. For example, if you want to, if you, if you want to prefer a solution, things particular to situations of this nature, you don't expect that it's just men that would be within the um, board for which decisions are being made. That's the reason why we really need a lot more women to come on board to profess solutions, women-driven solutions, because they understand these are women speaking their languages to themselves, for example. And she also established the fact that in terms of COVID-19, women have the face of the COVID-19 because as a matter of fact, they're the ones that are the most affected. So they expect that governments will come up with solutions such as investing in campaigns, they would have to plead a lot with the men. Of course, um, this is something that pleading with the, with the psyche of the men, of course, to ensure that these things are reduced. Because at the end of the day, there's only so much the government can do. The, the end result boils down to these, these perpetrators of such crimes within the homes. Mm -hmm. Again, during that briefing, uh, Dr. Moeti mentioned that eight, out, eight countries in Africa are responsible for the increase that we saw uh, globally of the pandemic. And Nigeria is one of those countries that uh, she mentioned. What implication does that have for us as a country, Irene? Oh, well, um, truth is, the government on its, has a part to play. The individuals have their parts to play as well. Because at the end of the day, with the rising, rising cases, as a matter of fact, it's not just Africa. We're talking about global cases as well. So you see that in areas like Argentina, um, Argentina has come up with 
solutions where you can go into pharmacies, for example, and report issues of this nature. So here in Nigeria, the government needs to also come up with either collaborating with pharmacies or areas or, or different locations where these young people can go and, you know, lay their complaints. Are there numbers out there? So we should also put this as essential services where pharmacies become essential services when situations of this nature come on board that people can, young girls, women can go and you know, lay their complaints and see results so that they don't feel alone, so that they don't feel like there's no one to run to and there's no one to speak with during situations of this nature, which is very important. Mm -hmm. Irene Ubani, our business uh, correspondent, thank you for participating in that briefing and of course summarizing it for us and putting it in context. Stay safe out there, Irene. Thank you very much, Amaka.